But in doing this, I'm going to tell you, when you become a part of ACLC, there's a couple of things you will hear uh, said from time to time that you might not be accustomed to. And one is, first of all, we all know that God is our Father, right? Can y'all say yes. God's my Father? Yes. Well, in ACLC, you will hear people refer to God, our Father, as our Heavenly Parent. Amen. So you hear him say Heavenly Parent. You remember that? Well, I ain't never heard that before. Well, if God's your Father, he's your Heavenly Parent. So I'm just trying to help you get clarity there. And then you will hear them. Now, how many of you uh, in ministry, you have spiritual parents? You have spiritual parents, you have spiritual parents all over the place. Well, in ACLC, our spiritual parent is Father and Mother Moon. All right? So you will hear them referred to as true parents. They're the founders of ACLC, the American Clergy Leadership Conference. So I'm just sharing that with you just so you start understanding when you hear people say or use certain terms. Is that okay? Yeah. Everybody's still okay? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to get into session one, which really begins to go into talking about God's original plan. And this here is the purpose of life. So we see that God had a plan, which is basically three blessings. And my job here today is to talk to you about blessing number one. So to talk about blessing number one, does this thing have a little red light on? Oh, look at that right there. <laughs> So I'm going to be talking to you about blessing number one, which is this area over here. But I kind of want to kind of come into that from the back door, if you will permit me to do that. Because what we're talking about is having, uh, getting to the point where, I got this, this box down here, sir. This box down here with Yuki Gill's name in it. Yeah. Oh. yeah it's kind of blocked in front of my slap. So this is talking about, uh, uh, blessing number one is talking about being fruitful. And it's talking about the individual, us being fruitful. But in order for us to become true, what if we were to uh, just open up one day and we go out and we say, hey, uh, we're just going to go out and we're going to make the world a uh, uh, harmonious world. Do you think if we just say that we're going to have a harmonious world? No. You think we're in a harmonious world now? No. Okay, so if we're not in a harmonious world now, obviously we can't start over here, can we? No. Even if we were to come back and go to your family reunion, I'm just talking about your family. Does your family, is your family harmonious? No. So if we can't just have a harmonious world uh, by saying we have one, or, and you can't even go to the family reunion and agree with who's going to get the drumstick and who's going to get the wing, <laughs> you don't have a harmonious family. <laughs> if we're going to get there, we got to start someplace else, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to come all the way down here and start. Can you say that the blessing starts with me? So we got to get to the point where we're going to get to God's purpose in life, which is to have a harmonious world. We've got to come all the way down here where we start working on us. Amen. And if you see here how this this on the, it's kind of on the point rectangle, I don't know, what do you call that, your college professors? When the square is on this angle like that. Or position, or yeah. Oh, it's yeah, that right there. Okay, so, so in this, what we're working on, we're working on developing this great relationship with God, and when we develop this great relationship with God, ultimately we become mature people. And now, we don't become fruitful until we really reach maturity. In the Bible, uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 1 that God created man and woman, and that we are supposed to be what? Fruitful? Right? Yeah. Multiply and have dominion. Those are the three things we're supposed to be doing, the three blessings. But we have to start with being fruitful. Now, oftentimes as pastors, when we start talking about being fruitful, we're really talking about husbands and wives. Y'all go forth and be fruitful. What are we really telling them to do? Go have sex. Oh, oh can I say that in church? <laughs> we're, we're talking about them going and making babies and multiplying. But that really isn't what God's talking about from the very beginning. What God is talking about us becoming fruitful means to me we have to get to a point of maturity. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not mature. Couples get married all the time. They're not mature. I'm from the city. My wife is from the country. I had to learn how to walk down dirt roads with no shoes on. I, we don't do that in the city. That was humor. <laughs> okay. So here we go. We got God. He ultimately wants us to be a mature person. That's what these lines here are for. God wants us to be a mature person. We become mature people when we become more like God. Right? But how do we become more like God? 
We have to start working on our mind and on our body. Over in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you will present your body. bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. So here we're talking about the body and the mind, and the body and the mind have to get to the point where we're working together, maturing and developing in this relationship with God until we become fruitful or become to a point of maturity. So God wants us to get to this point, and I want you to understand it's not just you. It wasn't just Adam and Eve that God uh, wanted to go through this process. Is it right? Just point away. What's happening, Dolly? Turn it on. Maybe it has a switch. Well, I'm on because it's beeping. What you doing, Tim? Okay, here we go. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so so here we go. He wants us to become mature and which is individual individual for perfection in mind, body becoming one. Our mind and our body becoming one, honoring and obeying God, the will of God, becoming mature in our character and in our heart, becoming one with God. This is ultimately what God desires for us to do. Y'all getting this? So here's the first blessing, that Jesus fulfilled the first blessing by achieving perfection. Now, I want you to focus in on that word, good gracious, I'm going to figure this out, achieving. This word achieving, because achieve means to successfully bring about or to re reach a desired objective, level, or result by effort, skill, or courage. So God wants us to achieve perfection, but somebody say it's work. It's work. You got to work. You have to work at it. You have to put forth effort to become mature, uh, uh, to do this thing that Jesus wants us to do. He first did it, and the scripture is saying, look, that Jesus achieved perfection. What? Wait a minute, Pastor. Are you trying to say he wasn't perfect when he first came? No, he had to grow into this. Remember, he came as an infant, as a child. He had to grow up through uh, being a child. He had to get his mind and his body together in cahoots or in uh, collaboration with God, doing the will of God. Amen? Amen. Anybody in agreement? Yes. Anybody disagree? Praise the Lord. Amen. And then Scripture says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Scripture's right there. So if you write down Scripture, write those down. Because we're about to go through it. Just write the Scripture down. You can go look at it on your own. All right? And they're going to say, so Jesus said that he and God were one in body. And that's where God wants us to be. He wants us to be where the things that come out of our mouth is what God will say. The things that, uh, you know, what we're doing in character will represent God. See, in other words, I would say like this. It's time out for being Sunday saints and Monday ain'ts. So you can't be representing God on Sunday and then on Monday you go do what you want to do. And then like when Pastor, when she was up there, she was saying, do whatever you do on Saturday night, but on Sunday we're going to church. No, we had to stop doing that because the question was asked by Pastor Honeycutt. Uh, he was asking about uh, the churches working together as one. Well, how are the churches going to work together? And then somebody else was said, will our children inherit our faith? You said that. Will our children inherit our faith? Well, it's possible, but our faith has to be lived out. It has to be demonstrated on a daily basis in front of our children. We can't continue to say, do as I say, not as I do. We cannot keep doing that. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus followed the principles and the direction of God. And as a result of him doing that, Jesus could boldly say, me and my father, we're one. And that's what each one of us should be able to say. That I'm one with my heavenly parent. Jesus was the son simply because... Uh, uh, Jesus is son simply because he was perfect, perfectly, he was perfectly united with God in will and in heart. Okay, and because of that one is Jesus Christ, he could willingly die for the rest of the world. It was his perfection that allowed him to sacrifice his life on the cross for all of our wrongdoing, mm -hmm. for all of our sin. Aren't y'all grateful for that? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because my blood wouldn't save none of y'all would work. Amen? Alright? Oh, let me back up because uh, Reverend Moon had said this. How can you become the true son and daughter of Christ 
by becoming perfectly one with Christ, one with his spirit, and one with his heart. So it's important for us to be one in spirit, one in heart with Christ. All right, and this is what we're talking about. Still part of the true blessing. Jesus himself had to grow and become perfectly being obedient. Remember, I was talking about that earlier when we were talking about achieving. Jesus had to grow. So Jesus wasn't born perfect. There were some times his parents were looking for him too. All right, so he, he wasn't perfect, but he grew into obedience. Jesus, uh, and then going to see, uh, though he was a son, he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the, the thing by things uh, which he suffered yeah. and having been perfected he became the author of eternal salvation man wouldn't it be great if, you know, if the way wow. you, if you lived your life to the point where you became the author of something that impacted awesome. the entire globe yeah. well that's what father and mother moon wants us to do they want us to become mature in character so together we can impact the globe father and mother moon be believes that the, the base of this whole idea starts with America. Those of us right here in this room, one at a time, going out, making a difference. Uh, Jesus in Christ increased in his wisdom and his stature. Again, he was achieving. He was growing in his favor with God. He was growing, developing into this mature person. And the child grew and he waxed strong. And he, uh, uh, he, uh, he waxed strong in spirit. He was filled with wisdom and grace. Look what he says. The grace. So the grace of God was upon him. He was growing into it. I'm trying to encourage saints to be to begin to grow. So Jesus is asking us to become fruitful also. Just like he achieved and he became fruitful. Listen, we don't care what you did yesterday. We don't care what you did last week, last month, last year, or the past 20 years of your life. It doesn't matter. It all starts with me today. What are you willing to do today? Are you willing to work hard and build your character on the things of God today? All right? So to him who overcomes is what Jesus said right there in Revelation 3.21. To him who overcomes, I will grant him to sit with me on the throne all, uh, as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne. Jesus is trying to get us just to follow in his footsteps. That's right. right? It's all about that maturity and our character. Okay? And then in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, he says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And ultimately, this is what God is talking about. We're working, again, we're working on our relationship with God and our mind and body to become mature persons. Any mature people in the house? Well, give God a hand clap of praise. I'm about to give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Amen.